Welcome everyone to another uh, video financial understanding podcast uh, with Ted and I. We're looking at Coupang today. There's been a lot of noise about Coupang in the media recently. Uh, full disclosure, I haven't invested in this company yet. Uh, I'm looking to see if the uh, circumstances are right and quite frankly, if this is a good buy. Uh, but Coupang are essentially, they're, they're considered the Amazon of, the, of South Korea. Now, there are a few others like that. You know, Alibaba was mentioned like that. Certainly Mercado Libre, which is in South America. Now, the difference between Coupang and two of its major competitors in the region uh, and, and in the country as well, is that like Amazon, they have their own fulfillment and logistic centers. So this is a, this is a company that's invested a huge amount of money to set up logistic centers all around South uh, Korea. Just to give you an extent, they have about 110 logistic centers and 70% of South Korea's population live within seven miles of a logistic center. So that gives them a huge advantage when it comes to cost, when it comes to delivery times. In fact, also when it comes to delivery of fresh food produce, which is a big, big thing there uh, and a huge source of competitive advantage. So if you order something by 12 midnight, Theoretically, you can have it received by 7 a.m. the next day. So that gives it seven hours of lead time, which is a really big competitive advantage. They also have their own version of Amazon Prime. So they're really going after that model as a source of competitive advantage. So thank you to one of our viewers, Kerry, for uh, submitting this request. And as we said, as we promise, if you make a request, we will make the video for you. So if you're watching this and you have some companies you're interested in seeing, the finances behind and getting our analysis, send, uh, send us a note in the comment section. So Ted, what have we found about this very interesting company? They've only just floated on the market earlier this year, correct? So that's right, Moe, they have just floated. Um, unfortunately, as a result of that, we can't get hold of their, uh, uh, their 10K report, which is the annual report, but we do have their 10Q report, which is now uh, on the screen which shows the financial performance of the business. So let's go and see uh, how they've performed for the first quarter uh, of 2021 compared with the first quarter of 2020. Uh, and then we can think about if they, uh, you know, if we take the first quarter, multiply by four, that gives us perhaps an approximation as to how they're going to perform for the year, plus a little bit of growth in that. So here are the numbers, um, and we notice that they've got some, uh, some, the retail sales is up at the top. Those are the retail sales, and then they've got a bit of other income. I'm not sure exactly what that is. If you remember, when we looked at Amazon, they had a lot from uh, Amazon Web Services. I don't know whether these guys are providing the same sort of um, uh, uh, service. Um, but the, the revenue has increased uh, quarter on quarter by 74%. So that's a significant increase. Um, and, you know, hopefully they're going to be, um, uh, you know, continuing uh, that acceleration drive. The cost of sales, obviously, we'd expect to go up. Uh, and they're keeping a gross margin of about 17, 18%. So the gross margin is staying constant as the business grows. Uh, the overheads are, are increasing, as we would expect with a growing company. So you mentioned, for example, you know, the additional warehouses, for example, the fulfillment, the staff that they're going to need um, to employ. Uh, and as a result, uh, their operating loss has also increased. So it's not looking so um, uh it's not looking so good for these guys. Um, the operating loss has actually increased from negative 3% to negative 6%. So maybe that kind of, you know, this number here, uh, this, um, uh, this operating costs is a reflection of the investment in people, in technology, in staff, you know, they're building for the future. So, you know, if, if that is the case, and, and, and it would not appear unreasonable to assume that's the case, then I think that's an acceptable aspect of the business. Um, what's also quite interesting about uh, this company is this line here, where they are paying interest. So if they're paying interest, it means that they must have some debt sitting on their balance sheet. Uh, 
typically, if you're a loss making business, then it's going to be struggling to get debt. So they're going to have some debt and equity. Um, but it looks like, you know, the banks will have done their research. They'll have checked the, um, uh, you know, the viability of the business. So if the banks are in there, then we should feel a little bit more confident um, about this business and its potential for success. So there is the um, uh, the income statement. If we just look at the balance sheet and look at the strength of the balance sheet. Um, so here we go. Uh, so this is, remember, this is the balance sheet is a snapshot as at a particular time. Uh, total assets are about 8.6 billion. Um, most of those are the current assets here, and uh, they've got a lot of cash sitting in their um, uh, uh, in their bank account. So they've got a lot of cash. So even if they are making a loss, and relative to that cash balance, it's a small loss, which means that you know this company. You know they've got plenty of time. They've got lots of you know uh, uh, you know fuel in the tank, so to speak, to get themselves up to speed. Um, high on inventories, but we'd expect that. So you know th this will be a, you know as we've talked about an internet fulfillment company. They need to hold that stock ready for when people want to buy it. A um, little bit of plant uh, plant and equipment. So this will be um, you know some of their warehouses. Some of them they'll lease. Some of them they will own. Accounts payable is very high. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later on because this is a this is a significant number. Um, in fact, we'll talk about it now. So the accounts payable is interesting. If we run that through our our um, working capital requirement calculation, um, it actually tells us that these guys, on average, for the accounts receivable, that's this number up here. The accounts receivable, it's taking them on average seven days to collect the money. Well, that kind of makes sense because these guys, you know, if you think about it, when you buy on Amazon, um, you click, you pay, and then it gets shipped to you. So accounts receivable is not a big um, issue for these guys. The accounts payable is they're paying their suppliers. So look at the accounts payable. So by my calculation, it's about 74 days um, that they're taking to pay their suppliers. Now that's, you know, that's not unreasonable, but it's quite a long time. So this is a very strong cash flow business model because effectively what they're doing is that they're getting the, uh, they, they, they're getting the, um, uh, uh, the inventory in, but it's taking them 130 days to sell that inventory. So it takes them 130 days to sell the inventory. They get the money in almost immediately, which is why they're having to push back on their accounts payable to pay as late as possible, 74 days. Um, and, and that does not appear, I think, unreasonable for these guys. Uh, and once again, we can see the debt. So down the bottom, uh, down here, we see uh, some debt and some convertible notes um, sitting on their balance sheet. And that's why they are paying the, um, uh, the interest. So the last... Um, uh, thing to look at is their cash flow statement. Uh, and the cash flow statement here is the loss for the quarter that they're making. Uh, but here is the, um, the, the cash provided. So they're actually making a cash loss as well. Um, the cash loss has increased, um, which is not good. However, they're expecting to kind of, you know, start making a profit as the business grows that we'd expect that cash loss to become a cash profit. And they do have enough cash in the bank uh, in order to be able to fund that. So this is not a company which is a going concern. It's not kind of, it's not sailing too close to the wind. It looks like they've got a pretty good um, a, a cash balance there um, to, uh, to, to, to see them through. Um, in terms of their financing activities, that cash in the bank has come through. Here it is. It's the proceeds from the issue of common stock. Um, so that's really driving them, uh, the, 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 the financing provided by, uh, sorry, the cash provided by their financing activities, 3.5 billion, that's the IPO, that's the flotation. Um, and at the same time, um, a lot of the warrants were actually exercised. So if we go back to the balance sheet, uh, we can see uh, in the balance sheet, for example, that um, uh, these convertible warrants effectively have disappeared um, and they are now uh, in uh, the additional paid in capital. So we've got convertible warrants and additional shares. They've now got the war chest. The cash uh, balance is significantly increased um, and they are ready to start delivering uh, on their business model. There we see uh, the cash has gone up from about 1.3 billion up to about 4.3 billion. Um, you know, 
they're ready for it. They're, 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 they're prepared. They've got the cash in the bank. They're growing. Um, they, uh, they're making a small loss. Uh, that small loss is expected to become um, a, a profit uh, uh, in the next year or so uh, and as they start to grow. Uh, and then it's really just how much they can capitalize that. Can they dominate the market so that nobody else can get in? Can they deliver? You know, can they basically do an Amazon? Um, let's look at the um, share price for this company. Again, it's going to be quite difficult to kind of work out about, you know, you know, is it cheap? Is it expensive? Uh, so we notice there's no price to earnings ratio. This company is valued at 6.2, uh, uh, sorry, 62.5 billion dollars. Um, remember, that's on a net asset value uh, of uh, it's about three billion dollars is the is the actual total net asset value. So it's all goodwill. Is it worth sixty two and a half billion dollars? I have no idea. I guess you'd have to, we'd have to look at come you know some of the projections of the company where they think you know what kind of profit figures do they expect to be getting in the next five or ten years, for example, uh, and then sort of you know looking at the multiples um, thereon. So you know it's an expensive company. You can see it's uh, this is the share price. It's been bouncing around for a year. It's been dropping. Um, but it's coming back again just recently. It's, it, it's on the rise. You know, have they turned the corner? Um, you know, are they actually going to start you know, generating uh, decent amounts of cash? Yeah, this is a really interesting analysis for a company that's uh, been catching a lot of attention recently. And it's uh, one of the recent companies based in Asia that have floated on the, uh, the US stock exchange. So it got a lot of press because of that. Um, so would love to hear everyone else's thoughts. Uh, I mean, it has potential. One of the big areas for this company is can it take its business outside of South Korea and expand into other areas? They've already started doing that, actually, although very quietly in Singapore, which is a densely populated area and has big potential for e-commerce uh, for this e-commerce company. But who knows? Right. Uh, we have to look at some of those some of those deliveries that they've made and how they're going to actually work in the business. And if they're going to become successful, uh, we're going to have to wait and see and see what the results are. So what are your thoughts? Again, like, share, subscribe. Would love to hear your thoughts on this video. Any experts out there in e-commerce world, particularly in Asia and Asia Pacific, we'd love to hear from you. And if you have any companies you would like us to analyze for you, whether you're doing business with them, whether you're thinking about investing in them, or even if you've got an interview coming up with them and you want to sound smarter during your interview, um, leave us a note, let us know, and we will do that video for you. So thank you again, Kerry, for your request. We were happy to fulfill that. Ted, thank you. And uh, we'll wait till the next video. Look forward to it. Good to speak to you, Mary. See you later. Take care.